make sure that you're using your grading utensil. Um, you are, if you got it wrong, you do need to mark it wrong, but guys, we need to write in our correct information because just marking it wrong does not help us improve our score. It doesn't help us correct our work. So make sure that we're correcting it. And if we don't understand something, let's ask lots of questions. Um, our dynamic test is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, so this is our last section to go over. Um, Sarah used the tape diagram below to illustrate the ratio of goldfish to angelfish in her aquarium. If four more sections are added to the goldfish tape, how many sections are going to be added to our angelfish tape? So when I add four more to the goldfish tape, what type of boxes do I need to be putting on there? Okay. Squares. These square, these small squares. So I'm going to add four more small squares, trying to draw them about the same size. Okay, so I have my four more small squares. Now for my tape diagram, do y'all see how they end at the same place? They're matched up. It's a mat it's a my ratio is 2 to 1, 2 to 1, 2 to 1, 2 to 1. So when I add these four more, how much do I need to add on my angelfish boxes? Um, Gabrielle? Two. Two. We're just going to add two long boxes or longer boxes. All right. So now when I answer my question, it says how many sections must be added to the angelfish tape? Please make sure that we're writing that in like a complete sentence. So we're going to be say two sections must be added to the angel fish tape. Okay? Complete sentence. All my information is there. We added our two sections. Any questions about 13? All right. If you did not get that correct, please make sure you fix it. Number 14. Um, we have to write a double number line. Um, about these staplers. Um, up on the board, we were supposed to fill in 40 and 2. If you did not have 40 and 2 filled in, our number line would have been impossible because we don't know how many staples go in the stapler based on the words in the problem. All right, so it says the double number line below shows the number of staples it takes to fill two staplers. How many staples will it take to fill 10 staplers? Fill in the double Double number line completely. Don't forget your zeros. What does it mean by don't forget your zeros? What does that mean? What is that talking about, Blake? Yeah, our number line should start with zero. Our number line has to start in the same place. Our number line has to start in the same place. So now that I have zeros here, zero to 40. What am I adding each time here? What am I? 40. So zero to 40 is 40 plus 40 is 80 plus 40 more. Plus 40 more. Plus 40 more. 200. All right, so we filled in our top. So let's fill in the bottom to go from 0 to 2. What am I adding? 2. So on the bottom, we want to make sure we count by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, which remember, what's our goal? To fill 10 staplers. If I look down here at the bottom, what's the bottom talking about? Staplers. So to fill 10 staplers, if I look down here, 10 staplers, there it is. What do we match up with there? 200 staples. So for my answer, um, it takes 200 staples. If you did not answer in complete sentence, if you'll just fill in your sentence, you don't have to mark it wrong. Um, but remember, on a free response test, if you don't answer in a complete sentence, I'm going to take off points. Fortunately, our nine weeks test will be multiple choice. All right, it takes 200 staples to fill 10 staplers. If you did not make a complete sentence, just fill in a complete sentence. You don't have to mark it wrong unless you got the wrong answer. All right, number 15. We have to be careful. This is just asking us to write a ratio. But remember, when you're writing a ratio, does order matter? Yes. Oh, yes. So we got to make sure we're reading it carefully. It says there are 10 boys to every 12 girls in my class. But then it asks for what is the ratio of girls to boys. boys. So which number actually has to be first? Cameron? 
the girls has to go first. Now remember guys, um, I've seen a lot of people writing their ratios with the colon. That's a perfectly acceptable way to write your ratio, but we have said if it's not specified, how do I want to see your ratio? As a fraction. So if you're writing them with a colon on our test, you don't have to, on our homework, on our study guide, on our review sheet, you don't have to mark it wrong, but please write that in as a fraction. Fractions are better because, again, we can do more math with a fraction. We can't do math with the colon there, okay? Yes, ma'am. You can't write a um, ratio as a decimal, right? Yes, you cannot write a ratio as a decimal because a decimal, a ratio has to have two numbers that we're comparing. A decimal, when it's written, is even though it might have more than one digit, it's still just one number. All right, so my girls, how many girls do we have? Twelve. Twelve, so we're going to put that on top because it was first. And how many boys do we have? Ten. ten. So 12 over 10 is my ratio. <laughs> now, when we have a ratio, we want to make sure that we write it in simplest form, part of why we like to have a fraction, because fractions, we should always be thinking simplify, simplify, simplify. What can I do to simplify 12 over 10? What can I do to 12 over 10 to simplify it? Um, Emily? We can divide it by 2. Now, here's the thing, guys. Y'all's scientific calculators are excellent, but if I type 12 over 10 into a scientific calculator, it's going to give me a mixed number. Can we write our answer mixed? Yeah. No. You've got to do this by hand. 12 divided by 2 is? Six. 10 divided by 2 is? Five. Now, will 6 and 5 simplify anymore? No. no. So, this is my answer. Guys, again, the graphing calculator would have given you 1 and 1 fifth. A ratio only compares two numbers. How many numbers are here? Three. So guys, that is not that is not a ratio. Do not do that. Taylor? If you did not simplify, yes, we did have to simplify. We are going to mark that wrong. And then just correct it so you know that, hey, on my test, make sure I simplify. All right. All right. Um, number 16. Mr. Baker brought a 13-pound bag of dog food for $34.45. How much did he pay per pound? When I see the word per, what does that make me think? Awesome. Unit rate. Yes. So I know i got to find the unit rate, which means, what does that mean, unit rate? Caleb, add up. And what does it mean? Unit rate. Okay. All right, so someone else, what, can you, what does unit rate mean? Can someone explain it to me? Taylor? It's like a ratio. Okay, so what's... Like you put like the word next to it and then you divide it to make the denominator one. The denominator one. That's what I'm looking for, guys, there. So, Caleb, when you showed me your paper, what was on the bottom of our answer? On my unit rate, the bottom of my answer was a one. Our goal for a unit rate is to get a 1 in the denominator. I said in our answer, in our answer, okay? All right. Before I can get to my answer, though, I've got to set this up. When I'm talking about 13-pound bag of dog food for $34.45, guys, it tells me the order right here. Pay per pound. So what has to be on the top? The money, how much he's paying. So we're going to put our... $34.45 on the top, so then what goes on the bottom? The pounds. Per pound, so 13 pounds. Okay. All right, so now from here, from here we need to get a 1 on the bottom, so what do I need to do to get a 1 on the bottom, Michaela? Um, divide, um, um, Divide by 13, because on the bottom, 13 divided by 13 equals 1. So that's 1 pound. All right, and then what do I get on the top? So this is when the calculator does come in handy, so I don't have to do long division for that. What do I get on the top? Um, Kaylee. $2.65. $2.65. What's the other way I can write it? So here I have it as a fraction. What's the other way I can write that out? Faith? Or $2.65 per pound. 
All right, either one of those would be acceptable. Okay. All right, um, number 17. And number 17 and 18 have had people do it different ways. Um, I've had some people do it with double number lines, all right, which is something we've done recently, just as like a visual representation and found their answer that way. All right, I've, the way that I did this, if I don't know where to start, if I'm doing a ratio, I'm always going to go ahead and set up a fraction, okay? So for number 17, um, Sean's class sorted crayons in art class. Um, the class find, found 12 crayons in three minutes. How long did it take them to find 36 red crayons? So what ratio am I given? What ratio am I given? What comparison? Um, Thena? I'm given two numbers that are related to each other. Yeah, 12 red crayons in three minutes. Do you all agree that those, the 12 crayons in three minutes, those go together? So I'm going to use that to go ahead and write a fraction out. So I'm going to do 12 red crayons. I'm just going to write red over three minutes. I'm going to put M-I-N. Just because this is my work, I don't have to write everything out fully. All right, so our goal here, what is our goal? What are we trying to find, okay? Yeah, so we're trying to find out how long it actually gets to the 36 red crayons, okay? Okay, so what is your question about 16? That's fine. That's okay. Remember, guys, I want to see the work, though, okay? Okay. All right, so guys, we're trying to get, so back to number 17, we're trying to get to 36 red crayons. So now if I set up another fraction, another fraction, we're really setting up an equivalent ratio, where is my 36 red crayons going to need to go in that ratio? What do you think, Cole? On the top. On the top. Red goes on top here, so my red crayons are going to go on top over here. All right. Now, do we know how many minutes go on the bottom with that? No. no. So we do not know. So that's what we're trying to fill in, though. All right, guys, it's an equivalent ratio. If I do something to the top, I have to do it to the bottom. bottom. So, guys, now I can just look and see, hey, what did I do to 12 to get 36? What did we do to that lyric? We multiplied it by three. We multiplied it by three. And if I do it to the top, I'm going to do it to the bottom. So down here, I'm also going to do times 3, which gives me 9. So my answer would be 9 minutes. What did you put as your answer for 17? That's fine. Um, Cannon? Okay, I put, if I didn't do a fraction, but when I saw 12 and 36, I made 12 times 30 is 36, and then so I just went to the three and a half. That's excellent. So, yeah, so these numbers are pretty obvious when we're looking at this in our head. You know, 12 times 3 is 36. So some of you just did 3 times 3 in your head and wrote your answer. Just remember, guys, I want to see your work, all right? I don't want to just see, hey, oh, look, here's a random number that I'm writing down. Because then do I know what you did in your head? No, unless you write it, I don't know because I really I have not developed the superpower of reading your mind. I haven't. I'm working on it, but I'm not there yet, so I need you to write it down still. Okay. All right. Um, number 18. The ratio of students wearing sneakers to flip-flops is 2 to 5. If 14 students wear sneakers, how many wear flip-flops? Again, I'm going to go ahead and set up a ratio with what I'm given. So that gives me the 2 to 5. But I need to know what is the 2 talking about and what is the 5 talking about. Taylor? The 2 is talking about um, the kids wearing sneakers and the 5 is talking about wearing flip-flops. Very good. The... Two is talking about the kids that are wearing sneakers, and the five is talking about the ones that are wearing flip-flops. All right. Now, I'm trying to change it to what is my goal? What am I trying to find? What am I trying to get to? What am I trying to get to, Lyric? Um. 
What other number am I given? 14. 14. And what's that 14 talking about? How many students are wearing sneakers? So where does that 14 have to go? So if I look at this ratio, so right here, based on this information, where would my 14 need to go? On the top, because 2 is talking about sneakers, and you just told me 14 was talking about sneakers. So they both go in the same place. And then we're wanting to know how many flip-flops. Guys, flip-flops is on the bottom. Flip-flops has to stay on the bottom. All right, so it's the same concept. What did I do to 2 to make it 14? Cameron? And if I do it on the top, do it on the bottom. So what do I get as my answer here? 35. All right, now we got to be careful because I made this mistake last period. This says 35 flip-flops. But is it really 35 flip-flops that we're asking about? It says how many are wearing flip-flops. Who is it that's wearing these flip-flops? The student. So that 35 is actually talking about 35 students who are wearing flip-flops. If you put 35 flip-flops with your grading utensil, I just want you to correct your sentence here. You don't have to mark it wrong, but remember, it wasn't actually saying 35 flip-flops. It was actually talking about 35 students wearing them. Yes, Kate? Like like you could. Yeah. Right, and some people also use the number line. They use the number line, a double number line, as their picture to um, show that ratio. Right? Okay, number 19. Number 19 threw us for a bit of a loop uh, because it was asking us to do something a little bit differently. All right, so it's, it gave us the ratio here. It said the ratio of kids wearing scarves to not wearing scarves is 12 to 9. We want to write two statements, so you got to have two, that represent the same ratio about the number of scarves. So what is the word same ratio? What does that mean? Uh, if they're the same ratio, they need to be equivalent. All right? So you could take it to mean equivalent, or you could, that's supposed to be a T. Um, you could take it to mean equivalent, or you could take it to mean that it's talking about the same scenario. So first of all, let's just talk about equivalent. If I wanted to find an equivalent ratio for 12 to 9, what could I do? What can I do to 12 and 9 to find an equivalent one? Uh, okay. Divide. We could divide. What can I divide these by? Three. We can divide them by 3. So now that's going to give me a new ratio. So let's write out. We've got to write out our complete statement. So the ratio of kids wearing scarves to not wearing, and I'm writing really small, scarves is, what would that ratio be now that we're dividing it by 3? 4 to 3. So did I really change anything about that statement? Nope, I just found an equivalent ratio. So that's one option, and then you could find a different one to write the same statement again. All right, but now there's another way that we could do this. All right, we could multiply and find another equivalent ratio, but I'm talking about a completely different scenario. Cole? I thought I might say, like, two true standards about so for every 12 kids wearing scarves, there's one, and then I said, if there were 24 wearing scarves, there's one. Yeah. So it would be 18 that don't. Okay, so the 24 and 18, that's more appropriate because that's giving me a different statement. Does that make sense? But if I'm leaving it as 12 and 9, I'm just rewriting the exact same information. All right. It's not wanting you to change the wording. It's wanting you to change your answer. Okay. Now, on this next one, I want us to think about it for a second. So I don't want to just find an equivalent one. This was an option. But there was another option for how we could do this problem that I think is a bit more interesting. So let's think about this for a second. So if I count up the people in here wearing scarves, how many is that? 
Um, one. Oh, me. I'm wearing a scarf. Okay, so there's just me. Just one. One of us is wearing a scarf. Okay. Now, how many people are not wearing a scarf? Like, like all of us, so that's like, what, 26, 25, 26, okay? Y'all can count it in a minute, okay? So, if I know how many are not wearing a scarf, and I know how many are wearing a scarf, okay? That's not necessarily what's important, okay? The number isn't important, all right? I'm idea. This is our, we, let's think of it in our brain for a second, just a general idea. If I know how many are not wearing a scarf, which is all y'all, and then I know how many are wearing a scarf, which is just me today, what else could I tell about the people in this room? Katie? Okay, so going back to our scenario, what can you tell about this room? All right, so what Katie just said is she said that we could tell how many total are wearing the scarves. So in this case, Katie said that 12 are not, 12 are, I'm sorry, 12 are wearing scarves, 29 are not. So what does that give me total? 12 and 29, how many kids total was that? 21 total. So what I'm going to do for the next one, instead of just talking about 12 and 9 or changing it to 4 and 3 or changing it to, some people changed it to 24 and 18 by multiplying, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the ratio of kids wearing scarves to, not to the ones not wearing scarves, but to the... The total, our, our complete amount. If I know how many are not wearing scarves and I know how many are wearing scarves, don't I know how many kids there are completely? Okay, so I'm going to compare the ratio of the kids wearing scarves. That says T again. I don't know why I'm writing T's everywhere. Scarves to the total kids is, what would that ratio be? What would that ratio be? How many kids were wearing scarves, Gabriella? How many kids were wearing scarves in our problem? The ratio of kids wearing scarves to not wearing scarves is 12 to 9. So which one of those tells me which ones are wearing scarves? Hmm? 12. Make sure you speak up so I can hear you. A little hard of hearing over here. Okay, so 12 to, we're comparing it to the total kids. How many total kids were there, Maya? 21 when we added them up. Okay, so those are two different ways we could have interpreted this problem. We could find equivalent <laughs> ratios, or we could have just found a completely different scenario. So if I did it this way, I might have done the kids wearing scarves to total kids, and then my second one might have been the kids not wearing scarves to total kids. Would that still give me two statements? Yeah. And then if I'm doing these equivalent ratios, well, we've talked about that. If equivalent, we can find an infinity amount, an infinite amount, because we can divide or we can multiply both by any number. So, questions about 19? 19. 19, there were a lot of questions in here yesterday about what it's asking us to do. Does that make sense? You had two different options on how to approach that. Are we okay with that? Okay. All right. Let's look at number 20. Um, so for number 20, um, the picture was up on the board that we were looking at. So we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 boxes. And the ones that were colored in were those. Okay, so what we had to do was pick how we had to write a ratio for the ones that were shaded and the ones that were unshaded. So if I count these up, how many are shaded? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that gives me six. And since they're using colons down here in my answer, I'll use a colon over here. Normally I would want a fraction. Okay. But how many are unshaded? How many are unshaded, Kate? Ten. ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got to be careful when we count. Now the problem is six and ten. Is that an option down there? No, what do you think, what do I need to do? Um, Brandon. 
Simplify. What are we going to divide by, Brandon? Two. Six divided by two is? Three. Three. Ten divided by two is? Five. Five. So that shows A was the best choice. All right, moving on now. Um, right, 81 miles in nine hours as a unit rate. Again, unit rate means what is my goal? What do I want on the bottom? A one. So we're going to write our 81 miles and nine hours as a fraction first. All right, now what do I have to do, Cameron? Divide 81 by nine. Divide 81 by nine and nine by nine. So 81 divided by nine is? Nine miles. I'm kind of running into that question. Over one hour because nine divided by nine is one. So that's one option for my answer. How else could I have written that answer out? Um, nine miles per hour. Or nine miles per hour. Okay. Excellent. All right, number 22. Um, Sally can do three push-ups in 10 seconds. Jeannie can do nine push-ups in 27 seconds. Are these rates equivalent? Options. Taylor, what did you do? <coughs> Actually, no, because you can Okay, so what um, Taylor said was she said when she simplifies, so three tenths, she said that will not simplify, but nine twenty sevenths will, and what did you say it was simplified to? Um, one third. One third. Now, she said when she simplified, are they ever going to equal the same ratio? <laughs> no. So that's one option. So I like that. What's another option? Did anyone work this differently than that? Um, Cole? Okay, so what Cole did was he said 3 times 3 is 9, and 10 times 3 is 30. So now that I have 9 over 30, now what, Cole? Yeah, so my numerators match, but do my denominators match? No. So if the top matches and the bottom doesn't match, are the fractions ever going to match? No. Okay, so that's another option. That's what the last class, that's what they came up with. That was the main answer across the board. The numerators match, but the denominators do not, so they are not equivalent. Okay, what did you do? Um, where are you getting the seven? Okay. Um, the other option, so I think kind of the direction you're trying to go is we could have found the unit rate. If the unit rate doesn't match, are they equivalent? No, so we could have divided to get a 1 on the bottom. These two options are probably the best simplifying. If they're all the way simplified and they do not match, they are not equivalent. If I find a common denominator or a common numerator and the opposite does not match, they are not equivalent. So let's see. So for our explanations, no because um, when simplified, they are not equal. All right, so that would be one description, one explanation that would be good. On um, the other option, we could say no, because Um, when the, in this case, we found our numerator matching, right? So when the numerator matches the denominator does not. Sorry, I kind of ran out of room there. Okay. All right, are there questions about 22? So those were two completely different ways we could have worked it. Again, we could have found um, unit rate as well. That would have also been an option. Okay. All right, number 23. There are 42 kids in band. 18 of them play saxophone. What is the ratio of students that do 
not play saxophone. Do I know that right now? How am I going to find the ratio of the students not playing saxophones? Um, Taylor. Very good. Okay, so she said she knows there are 42 kids in the class, 18 play saxophone, so if I subtract, we get 24, all right? And then we're comparing that to the entire class. So she also says she got 24 over 42 as her answer. Now, can I leave it as 24 over 42? No, that'll simplify. What can I use to simplify 24 and 42? Cole? Two. Two. We can start by doing two. All right, and a lot of people use 2, and then they wrote 12 over 21. If you left 12 over 21, you stopped too soon. What number can go into 12 and 21? Katie? 3. three. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 21 divided by 3 is 7. So 4 sevens would have been the best option there. All right, our last problem. Our last problem, and then we're going to set up our scantrons for tomorrow, so that's taken care of. Um, the ratio of children to adults at the movies is 8 to 4. So what is the 8 talking about? 8 children, because it was listed first. And then what is the 4 talking about? Adult, so 4 adult. All right, what would I do to simplify that? Um, where? We can divide by 2. So that gives me 4 children and 2 adult. Am I done yet, Lyric? No, what do I need to do now? we got to divide by 2 again. So we could have started by originally dividing by 4. That's okay, as long as we keep going. So I get 2 children and 1 adult. So what does that match with? Um, Taylor. A. Okay. Okay, two children per adult. Okay. All right, please remember for your homework tonight, I'm not sending home an additional study guide. I want you to go through any problem that you miss. You need to rework it on your own without looking at the correct answer to make sure you can get it correct.